Hello everyone and welcome back to my journey of creating a city builder game from scratch using my own engine. This week I've got quite a few various little updates I want to get done and uh, I'm also going to be doing some work on the art style of the game. So in the last devlog video I was working on the save system and that is now complete and working very nicely. Also recently I've been reshuffling some of the base systems in the game and tidying up some of the code just to make sure that I have a very solid foundation to start building up upon. This week if we have a look in Trello you can see that I've reached the final update of what I've been calling version 0.1. And this update's going to include quite a few miscellaneous, loose end, tidy up tasks that didn't really fit into any of the other categories nicely. So I'm going to get started now and I will show you what I'm working on in a bit. So I'm working on the first task of the day, which is to redo the camera movement. Um, it's been annoying me for a while that you can only move the camera around using the arrow keys. Uh, I'd much prefer to be able to drag, kind of drag the world around using the mouse. So I've just implemented that um, and I find that a lot easier to use, although you can still use the arrow keys if you prefer. Just about to stop for lunch now. For the rest of the morning, I finished off the camera stuff, got the rotations working and the zooming in and out and just generally made sure that the movement's all nice and smooth and as easy to use as it possibly can be. So that's all done now, I'll move on to the next task this afternoon, um, but first I'm just going to have a quick lunch and then maybe go for a run. Um, it's a bit snowy, but I don't think it's too deep yet. The next thing I've been working on is the selection guide, which is this square that shows you which tile in the world you're currently selecting. Previously it just looked like this, a simple square, which I didn't really like. Um, it didn't look very professional. So I did a bit of work in the shaders, some maths, and created a slightly nicer looking shape, a bit more of a rounded shape. And uh, I also tried to smooth out its movement a bit, so that when you move from tile to tile, it doesn't instantly flick to the next tile. It actually has a slight sliding animation as it goes between tiles, um, which makes it feel a, a lot smoother to work with. Moving on to the next task now, which is going to be to set up a simple debug system. Um, I just want to have a simple panel in the game for me as the developer uh, to give me some feedback about how the game's running, how the performance is, um, how many calculations and updates are happening per second, and then also maybe to give me a few options to toggle on um, like special debug views in the game. And um, I haven't got very far of that yet, so I've just got this panel which shows up when I press the tab key, but I'll be doing more work on that tomorrow. So I'm working on the debug stuff this morning. I've just set up a really simple debugging system in the code, which allows any part of the code to report when a certain event happens to the debugger. So here in the Pathfinder, I'm reporting every time a pathfinding calculation takes place. And that then allows me to keep track of how often it's happening. And I can then display that information in the debugging panel. Um, so I'm showing things like how often pathfinding calculations are happening, how many render calls are happening per frame, how many objects there are in the world, and then just a load of example values because I was testing out the layout. But as development goes on, I'll be displaying more and more values in here as I see necessary. Just added the first couple of options to the debugging panel. The first one is to show parking spaces. So when I turn that on, I can see where all the parking spaces are and I can see whether they're reserved or not based on the color. Um, that's something I used loads when I was working on the cars and I'm sure I'll use it a lot more in the future. And then the second option is to show the entity paths. So when I turn this on, you can see the path markers that the entities are currently following. So that's everything I want to do with the debugging system for now. Um, I'm gonna take a quick break from programming. I've got some herbs that I want to plant in the kitchen and then I'll be back to work this afternoon. This afternoon I've been looking into multi-language support so that I can get the game translated into other languages and this is something that I got really wrong with Equilinox. I waited way too long to start with the translations 
and then there turned out to be so many issues with translating the game into other languages um, that in the end it just never happened. So I definitely don't want to make that mistake again, so I'm going to get started nice and early with the translations this time, so that if any problems do arise, I've got plenty of time to sort them out. So my plan for the next few days is to do a bit more work on the art style of the game and uh, to make some more decisions specifically about what the buildings in the game are going to look like and what architectural style they're going to have. So far I've just been trying out a mixture of styles but I'd like to have a better idea of what they're actually going to look like in the finished game. So um, I think I'm going to look for a bit of inspiration this morning, try out a few different styles and uh, see if I can work out what would look best in the game. So here are a few houses that I've made this morning. I've been basing them mostly off English cottages because I thought that English cottages look quite cute and that might go well with the cute low poly art style that I'm going for with this game. And I think it works quite well, although I will try out a few different styles in a minute. Um, I've also been learning a lot about how to model 3D houses because I've not really done much of that before apart from the other houses that I've made in this game so far. So I've just been learning how to make different types of roofs and windows and doors. So I've just loaded up some of the houses into the game to see how they look. And I do like this style of house, but the colours are definitely looking a little bit dull and boring. and. Uh, needs a bit of livening up. Also, talking of colour, I need to implement a colour palette because what I've been doing so far is when I create these houses in Blender, I just choose the colours as I go individually for each house. And what I really should be doing is I should have a set colour palette, which I then choose colours from. Not only would that then allow me to make sure that all the colours work well together, but it would also bring a bit more consistency into the colours of the game. Um, for example, here you can see I've got like three slightly different colours for the windows of the houses and same for the roofs, they're all meant to be the same colour but they're all very slightly different. So I'm going to get a, a colour palette set up now. I can show you a really basic use of a colour palette here. I've just created one very quickly in GIMP and um, I've got that loaded up in Blender here. So when I'm creating the models, I can now just take the colours from the colour palette and use that in the model. So if I do that for all the models, obviously they're all going to have the same colors, which is what I want. Um, the problem is at some point in the future, I'm bound to want to tweak or change the colors in the color palette for the game. And um, at the moment, I'm only using the color palette when creating the models. So if we have a look in one of the entity files for a house, which is what the game uses, the colors are all set in here. So if I ever want to change the color palette for the game, I'd have to go through all of the existing entity files and update all of the colours one by one manually, which I definitely don't want to do. So what I need to do is to somehow link up these entity files with the colour palette itself, so that if I ever update the colour palette, the entities will automatically use the updated colour without me having to update any of the entity files. I've made a few changes so that the entity files can now reference colours in the colour palette. So for example, a lot of these buildings here are using the same colour for their roofs, which is this colour in the colour palette here. So if at any point I think actually the roofs would look better if they were a bit more of an orangey colour, I simply have to update the colour in the colour palette. And if I then relaunch the game, you can see that the roofs now all use that updated colour. And this is obviously going to make it really easy for me to play around with the colours as much as I want, try out completely different colour palettes for the game, um, without having to update any of the entity files. So that's all good. Um, now it's time for dinner. I've been spending quite a bit more time in Blender just trying out a few different things, playing around with the art style, trying out different styles of trees and road and 
trying out different colours, just trying to work out where I'm going with the art style for the game. Obviously I don't have to finalise the art style just yet, there's still plenty of time for that, but I just want to have a bit, a bit of a better idea of what direction I'm going in. And I think what I've got here I quite like now, so I think this is probably what I'm going to be aiming towards as I go forwards, but of course please do let me know what you guys think, um, there's still loads of time to improve and change the art style before the game's finished, so I'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas. It is 9 o'clock and uh, it's such a nice day today that I think we're actually going to be heading to the beach this morning and then when I get back this afternoon I'm going to start editing this video. So I think that's pretty much going to be it for this week. Um, I'm not too sure when the next devlog video is going to be out because if you have a look at my Trello the next tasks are all a little bit boring, lots of bug fixing and code tidying. So I think I'll wait until I've done all of that before I start making the next video. But the good news is that things should start to get a lot more interesting from now on because basically everything I've been doing up until now, although it's taken absolutely ages, it's all basically been set up. Um, but now that version 0.1 is done, or, or very close to being done, I can finally move on to the actual interesting parts and the gameplay. So very much looking forward to that. Um, but for this week that is going to be it, so thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.